Welcome back, everyone. It's great to be with you. Now, we've got a question that will tie things up a little bit. Uh, we haven't got a lot of time, and we've got Jennifer. We're getting Jennifer on the line. It's a past paper question about chemical systems, and it's about fertilizers. So let's just have a quick look at the question and then see if we can help Jennifer out. Jennifer, are you with us yet? Okay, let's wait and see. Uh, we say here, a learner is revising for a test on fertilizers. So that's the important thing. We're doing fertilizers. We've got step one, uh, hydrogen uh, gas production, which is in Sassel, nitrogen gas production, uh, which is industrial, nitrogen producing that. Step two, the production of NH3, which is ammonia. Step three, nitric acid, Oswald process, and then <coughs> nitrogen fertilizer. Good evening, Jennifer. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. Okay. So we're going to go through this quite quickly and just make sure that we've got it. It's a really nice summary of fertilizers. So it says write down the name of the industrial process in step one. So step one was this Sassel process uh, getting hydrogen. Uh, is, is that what we're looking for? What do we call this process when we make hydrogen? Uh, have you got any idea? Yes, it's fractional distillation. Uh, fractional distillation to get hydrogen, that's right. And it's fractional distillation to get nitrogen as well. Fractional distillation. Okay, got it? Uh, yes. Remember that we can separate different things uh, because of nitrogen being in the air. Uh, fractional distillation, uh, the Sassel process is not fractional distillation, it's the production of, of nitrogen that is the fractional distillation part that you're referring to. Okay, next thing here we go, the Haber process indicator is represented by the equation, and we've got the equation. We've seen this equation a few times this evening. In this process, high temperature of approximately 450 degrees are used. Explain in terms of reaction rate, equilibrium, and temperature, why such a high temperature and not a lower temperature is used. Have you got any ideas about that one? No. Okay, let's, let's have a look at it. What we know from the equation is that this is an delta H here is less than zero. So it's exothermic. Okay, are you with that? Yes. So what we know is that to get this reaction to take place, we need to increase the temperature because at room temperature or at low temperatures, um, what's happening is that uh, there's an activation energy that you need to get over. So to make the reaction happen, you need to get the temperature higher. So you give it energy to overcome the activation energy. Are you with me so far? Yes. However, now there's a problem. Once the reaction starts going, one of the products is heat. Okay? Yes. So uh, it's exothermic. So one of the products over here is heat. If we increase the temperature too much, then what will happen? If we increase the temperature too much, the endothermic reaction is favored. Okay. It okay. will drive the reaction that way. So the high temperature favors the endothermic reaction. When you, uh, yeah, that's right. When you heat any reaction, it favors the endothermic reaction. And the endothermic reaction in this case is the reverse reaction. Okay. okay. So what the problem with this particular reaction is, is that you need the temperature to be high enough, but not too high. Because if you make it too high, then you won't make the product. The equilibrium will shift to favor the reverse reaction. Okay, so if we use a lower temperature, there's not enough energy to make the ammonia. If we use a higher temperature, the reverse reaction is favored and we get a smaller yield because the equilibrium is shifted to favor the endothermic reaction. Are you okay with that? Yes. Okay, good. Let's go to the next one. It says write a balance equation for the reaction that produces the nitrogen fertilizer in step four. So over here, we've got nitric acid and we've got the ammonia 
that we're producing. We want a nitrogen fertilizer based on nitric acid. Uh, it looks like we're adding nitric acid and ammonia together. So all we want is a balanced equation. Okay, uh, so let's make some space for that. We've got nitric acid, NH3, and what we're wanting is ammonia, which is NH3. When you bubble these two together, you're going to get NH4NO3. And that is called ammonium what? Night rate. Okay? Yes. Jennifer? Yes, sir. <coughs> okay. Uh, let's, we're running a little out of time, so let's go to the next one. Uh, Jennifer, are you with me? Yes. Okay. Are you clear about that? Have I got it right? Yes. Ammonium nitrate. Okay. The learner decides to educate the community about the possible negative effects of overuse of nitrogen on the environment. So what we say is write down the main arguments that she will raise to convince the community to avoid excessive use of nitrogen fertilizers. Have you got any ideas? What would you tell people if they were using lots of nitrogen fertilizers? I know that um, nitro, nitrogen fertilizers can cause eutrophication. Okay. Remember that word, eutrophication. Yes. Okay. And eutrophication is what happens when we have the reason that what happens is this ammonia nitrate or fertilizers that contain nitrates are very soluble. So eutrophication is the key thing. Soluble, soluble uh, fertilizers, minerals, fertilizers dissolve, dissolve in the water. And what that leads to is excess algae. So you get what is called a, a bloom. Yes. Okay? So what happens is you add the nitrogen in. What happens? You get the soil washing into the rivers and into the, la the dams. And you've got extra nitrates in there and phosphates as well. The algae love it. They're plants. They grow quickly. Lots of them, very quickly, lots of uh, extra uh, algae gets formed. And then unfortunately, because there's such strong competition for nutrients and light, the algae starts to die. And the algae dies and mm, it forms this thick cluster. It uses up too much oxygen, starts to decompose, uses the oxygen in the water. And because it's used up the oxygen, the fish and the other plants in the, in the water die. are going to die. Okay, so okay. what we need to do is make sure we don't use too much nitrogen. We need to try and prevent washing of the fertilizer into the rivers. And th that would be the argument there. Okay, we've got a minute left. So what we want to say here is the learner notes that, the, that fertilizers with an NPK ratio of 7 to 1 to 1 is needed for the, the growth of maize plants. State what the terms NPK ratio refers to. What do they refer to? I'm sure you've got this right. Nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Exactly, exactly. Will the fertilizer with this ratio, NPK ratio lead to a good crop yield? Explain your answer. You got an idea there? No. Uh, okay. So we've got one minute left, and then we need to go. Uh, but just briefly, we've got too much nitrogen here. It's going to produce, it's not going to give us a good crop because we've got too high a value of nitrogen, and it's not safe. So make sure that you use a better balanced fertilizer. It depends, of course, on what the soil value is as well. So make sure that you've got a balance in your fertilizer as well. Okay, uh, yes. Jennifer, does that yes. help you? Yes. Okay.